What's going on everybody, Estas here, and in this video we're going to be doing an overall market update, taking a look at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're also going to be doing a trading update, talking about what I personally did today in the markets, as well as some stocks and ETFs that I'm watching and looking to trade right now in the month of December in 2019. And as you guys read in the title, there are two stocks in particular that I'm heavily considering buying right now in the stock market, and I also want to break down with you all, you guys, D guys, and whether or not I believe there's fear setting in here in the stock market before this trade deadline on December 15th, and whether or not I think this market could go up or down before that trade deadline. But before we do get into everything, guys, all I ask from you is to simply, lightly go down below and destroy that like button and consider subscribing if you want to see further content for me, and if you want to be further connected with the Strive Smart community. The Discord link is down below as well as the Facebook group. So without further ado, let's get into it here guys, starting off with the S&P 500. So you guys can see here the S&P ended up closing down $3.44, down 0.11%. And the hourly chart here, the 20 day one hour chart, let's be honest, this thing is not looking pretty, right? This is looking like a double top to me, which is a bearish pattern, right? We failed to break out of that 3154 all-time high, and we've been struggling over the past couple of days, mostly due to the market fearing, in my opinion, what's going to happen between the U.S. and China before this trade deadline, which is on the 15th. And if you guys don't know, on the 15th, there's about, I think, $160 billion worth of tariffs that are supposed to go into effect. And if these tariffs go into effect, which the market fears, I think this market has a very good chance of dropping, correcting a couple percentage points, right? But I personally think, I have a feeling, and I'm sure a lot of you guys probably have the same feeling, that these tariffs are going to get delayed. And obviously, the market wants that. If you guys see on this hour, uh, or rather this day chart, we were actually gapping up earlier this morning on that news of more optimism regarding the delay in the tariffs, because again, the market wants that. Then all of a sudden, you guys can see here, we saw a massive dump, and that is because we had two articles of impeachment against President Trump related to allegations of abuse of power and obstruction of justice, and that's what saw, or that's what led to this big drop in the S&P 500, right? All the way down to around 3126. And the thing with the trade war, guys, and U.S. and China actually getting to an agreement, Trump wants specific terms and he wants a guarantee that Beijing is going to purchase massive amounts of U.S. farm products, including agricultural products, poultry and soybeans, right? So he needs this guarantee from China, from Beijing, that they're going to do that. And that's kind of what is holding back um, at least a, a, a phase one deal at this point between the US and China. And again, this is probably going to lead, in my opinion, to a delay in these tariffs, which again, that's probably going to be a good thing for these markets. And we saw about a week or two ago, Donald Trump, Trump is in no rush for a trade deal, right? This is an arbitrary deadline. We've heard that before, right? And he's okay with waiting until after the election, the November 2020 election, presidential election, to make a deal with China. So, unfortunately, guys, for us traders, for us investors, um, the trade war, you know, all the stuff that goes along with the trade war, the pessimism, the optimism, the swings in the market, unfortunately, it seems like we're going to have to deal with that um, for a couple more months at least, maybe even a year, and that's just my gut speaking, guys, and I'm sure a lot of you all could relate to that as well. So, let me know down below in the comments. What are your thoughts on the trade situation, you know, agriculture, all of that good stuff. So the Dow Jones ended up closing down 27 points today, 0.1% to be exact. And just like the S&P, the chart's not looking pretty, right? We've been selling off the past couple of days. This is looking like, um, you know, a head and shoulder, the right shoulders forming itself. And especially if we dump below these moving averages on the hourly chart, that's not going to be too good for the Dow Jones. 
zones. And if we pull up that four hour chart, you can see it even clearer, right? This thing really looks like it wants to correct based on these technicals here down to about the 180 SMA on the four hour chart, which would be a pretty healthy correction of about two to three percent on the Dow Jones. And honestly, I wouldn't mind that. I would not mind these markets selling off. Um, we could potentially buy the dip down here. I think that could be a good opportunity, you know, across these markets, the Dow, the S&P. And that's kind of what I'm expecting if the trade, uh, or rather if the tariffs go into effect. I do think we may see that correction to that 180 SMA and the S&P maybe down to the 180 SMA as well, right? And if we go to the NASDAQ, this thing is currently down 50 cents, but these are the futures. Um, if I pull up Yahoo Finance very quickly, yada, 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 we were down $5.07% today um, in the markets in terms of the NASDAQ. So not too crazy of a day, just like the S&P and the Dow. This is not looking like the most bullish pattern, right? We're seeing a bit of resistance here at around 8,400. Um, this could potentially uh, correct down to that 180 SMA. And if we do get bad news, you know, regarding trade, that could be a break. If we do break that 180 SMA, that could be an extreme bearish pattern, um, in my personal opinion. And we could see some further downside from there. So in terms of these markets, yes, I think there is some fear, some anxiety setting in here. And if you look at the VIX guys, which a lot of people call the fear index, take a look at this VIX. The VIX does not lie. We were at 12, 11 bucks a couple weeks ago. Um, actually not even a couple of weeks ago, about 10, 15 days ago. And since then, really ever since we started to get some uh, tension again regarding trade, this thing has spiked up. We pulled down to 13 and we spiked up again ever since there, ever since that little pullback or rather pretty big pullback from 17 down to 13. And what's that telling me, guys? That's telling me volatility starting to kick in. And again, fear is kicking in in these markets. So very, very important to watch this VIX. If this thing starts to go crazy, you know, we could be seeing some volatility and obviously some selling off in this stock market. So overall, those are my thoughts right now on the stock market, guys. Again, let me know down below what are your thoughts, what are your opinions regarding trade, everything that's going on. Will this deadline be pushed back? I'd love to know what you guys have to think down below. And let's talk about what I did today in terms of my trading. Today was another one of those days where I've been cautious, or rather I was cautious cautious. And I've mentioned in yesterday's video how I've been cautious over these past couple of days, very, very, um, you know, picky with what I'm trading because of this deadline, because of the markets kind of struggling. We're seeing again, the VIX pushing up fear, volatility. I want to be more in a safe situation here with uh, a bigger cash position, right? So I've been a bit more conservative. And what I ended up doing today, um, I traded Tesla again, Again, or rather, I just completely sold out of my Tesla position to lock in those profits. And if you guys remember yesterday in yesterday's video, I talked about how I sold my initial or rather my, uh, you know, 50% of my um, position in Tesla because we were breaking above 340, right? I took a little bit of profits here just to be safe. And if you guys don't recall, I've been in Tesla since around 330 bucks, right? Since right around here on this dip after the unveiling of the cyber truck. So I ended up getting in here again yesterday. I sold half of my position for close to, I think it was a 2.5 to 3% profit. And with this crazy move that we saw today, up 10 bucks, up almost 3% at the close, despite the market selling off, I ended up selling another or really just selling out of my position completely, right? So I ended up taking about a 6% gain on those remaining shares. Actually, it was a little bit less than 6% um, because I didn't sell exactly at the peak, but I did end up selling right as we started to get um, to 350 bucks, which does happen to be the next resistance that Tesla is going to be facing here. So me selling it here does not mean that I'm bearish on Tesla. I'm just simply locking in profits because I have seen quite a nice run up since my entry point and I am up around 6% or I was up around five, six percent on the position with
which I love in terms of a shorter term swing because again I've been in this one for about a week or two at this point so for Tesla I'm looking to see you know if we break 350 and hold that now that could be my next entry point um, for the fill up to 360 bucks but in the short term hey we may pull down maybe to 345 344 and maybe we hold that level so I'm just waiting to see where it goes from here if it cools off or if it breaks up again and if you guys don't recall or didn't look actually in terms of what pushed Tesla stock up it was a Germany catalyst I forget off the top of my head right now um, but this morning here we go Germany's 500 million um, euro cathode factory to boost European electric battery production. So ever since that came out, seven minutes into the market, 9.37 a.m. Eastern Standard, Tesla stock pretty much skyrocketed, right? It ran up literally from that point in time, straight shot all the way to 350 bucks. And again, that's where I ended up taking my profit. So in terms of today, no new swing positions that I entered. Um, I was looking to enter some, but didn't get the, uh, the, the confirmation that I wanted. So all I did was really just lock in those profits here on Tesla. And again, I'm being very conservative due to this deadline coming up. And I know from experience, I know a lot of you guys know from experience as well, that the trade war could really rock the markets. And I'm not looking to get squashed, which is why I am just simply holding more cash right now than usual. So that's what I ended up doing in terms of my trading. Let me know down below what you guys ended ended up doing. Now let's talk about two stocks that I'm considering buying right now for a swing, probably after the deadline, if we get more news regarding that deadline um, in terms of the trade war, right? One of those stocks is going to be NVIDIA, ticker symbol NVDA. I see a bunch of potential on NVIDIA, especially if we pull up this three-year chart, you'll be able to see it if we break this 220 level, guys. After this 220 level, you can see this thing has potential to get to 250 bucks based on strict support and resistances, right? Maybe we get to 240. That's another level that I guess you can argue um, is a resistance in between um, here and 250, right? So probably from 220 to 240, that could be the first trade. Maybe we pull down from there and then rally up to 250. That could be the second trade. But ultimately, I'm just waiting for the buy signal, which in this case is going to be that break above $220 for me, right? That could be a buy signal or or, you know, if we start to climb up tomorrow pre-market, you know, continuing this little uptrend we've been on over the past three, four, five days, that could also be a little entry point if I want to buy before the confirmation, right? And if I were to do that, you know, if I were to buy a little bit at 216, then add more after the confirmation, if we were to break above 220, I'd add a little bit, right? I'd add about 10, 15%, then maybe another 10, 15% after we broke 220, if we broke 220 and then maybe another uh, 10 15 percent if we got to around 225 and then probably end up holding that or maybe not 10 15 percent because that doesn't add up to 100 percent but you guys get it right you add a little bit at a time until you reach your goal position right and then you end up holding to your you know target sell which we already discussed is around 230 bucks here on Nvidia so that's kind of my plan um, with Nvidia here the next stock that I'm really, really just waiting to buy here is going to be one that I took a loss on a couple of days ago, um, and that's Home Depot, right? Ticker symbol HD. This is a stock that a lot of people consider a safer play, right? It's a blue chip company, been around for a long time, dividend payer, all of that good stuff, right? It's not one of these companies that's unprofitable, that swings like crazy. It's typically this co one of these companies that pulls down once in a while, sees a healthy correction, but ultimately rebounds from there. And that's the stage that we're at right now. We've seen the correction, right, from 240 down to about 212, but now all I'm waiting for is the confirmation. And for me, and if you've been watching these videos, you know the confirmation is going to be a break above this 50 SMA and ultimately a break above 
225. That's the huge level of resistance right now that I'm seeing on Home Depot. And why is that? It's because we held 225 multiple times in the past, once, twice, three, four times, right? We hit that high at 230 and we broke below that support at around 225, making it that resistance level that we need to break above now. So for me to add money into Home Depot, initially, I need to see a break above that 50 SMA, right? If we get that, that's where I'll add a little bit of money into Home Depot. And ultimately, I want to add the bulk of my position above 225 just to play it safe, right? Just to play it safe because at this point, the confirmations, they're all going to be aligned. And I really see a straight shot to 240 if we're able to break that $225 level. So Home Depot, I'm liking it. And if you guys look on the longer term charts, you can see what I mean about, you know, each time it, it corrected, it recovered, right? No joke. Take a look at this. Over the past three years, we recovered, or rather we corrected, we recovered heavily, or heavily, right? We corrected, recovered heavily. Big correction here heading into 2018, right? We all remember that sell-off. And we recovered very heavily, and we had many, you know, many corrections along the way to that all-time high. And this correction is no joke, guys. This is about 10, 12%. That's a chunk. And you have to consider this as an entry point for Home Depot, in my opinion. But again, you have to wait for that confirmation. And it's really looking good on this three-year chart, guys. Take a look. Bullish candle forming on top of that 50 SMA at a higher low. Now we just have to be patient with it. And ultimately, I do think um, it's going to end up recovering. We just have to wait and I'm really looking to pull the trigger soon on this one, ticker symbol HD. And ultimately on this hourly chart, I'd like to see a breakout above this 180 SMA as well. The fact that we're holding the 50 SMA right now and trading between the moving averages, that's a good first step. But again, that break above the 180 and ultimately, ultimately the break above 225, that's what I'm looking for in terms of Home Depot here. So let's break down UGAS very quickly, then we'll take a look at natural gas and D gas. So you guys today, we saw yesterday actually it dumped crazy, right? It had a day it was down what like 17%. Um, very, very big gap down. But ever since then, you know, the past two days, we've slowly been recovering. We've been seeing that breather in you guys, like I called out um in Sunday's video, right? Today we didn't have a crazy green day, but we did have a green day nonetheless, up 13 cents, up 1.58%. And my theory with you guys with now natural gas right now is simple, right? If we pull up NGF20, right, which are the January contracts here, the futures contracts, I call this out on Sunday, right? We gapped down heavily and we saw uh, uh, some sort of support at around 220 heading into the open. And what that told me heading into the open on Monday session yesterday was this thing is looking to repeat the pattern that it did the previous week, right? We saw that massive sell-off. It was about a uh, 5% correction, whatever it may be, right? Extremely oversold is what uh, natural gas ended up getting in terms of the RSI. And we saw that similar support and we ultimately filled the gap back up to that 180 SMA like we did multiple times before. So I saw the big dump on Sunday. I was like, okay, this is looking similar to what happened last week. Big dump oversold. We're seeing support heading into Monday. That gives me a reason to believe we could rally back up to that 180 SMA giving you guys that short-term play. And really, ever since Sunday when I talked about that, We've been getting that short-term play on you guys, right? On the five-day, five-minute, you can see it. You know, we hit that bottom 765 ever since then, up about 10% to where we are right now. And honestly, guys, I do still see a bit more in the tank here um, for you guys, especially if we gap up tomorrow. Tomorrow and Thursday, very important days here in the short term for you guys, natural gas, and of course, D gas, because that report, the natural gas inventory report, comes out Thursday, 10.30 a.m. Eastern Standard, and that's typically when natural gas, you gas, and degas are the most volatile. So take a look tomorrow at you gas. If we gap up, I think if we gap up, we see a break above this 50 SMA, I could potentially see a rally tomorrow as well, right? Maybe another 5 6% rally um, closer to that 180 SMA where we've tested um, in the previous couple of weeks. And from there, that's going to be the interesting spot, guys, because from there, 
If we break out, that could be a huge reversal on you guys. But if we end up getting rejection uh, resistance there, we could get rejected, especially coupled with a bearish inventory report, which it's probably not going to be the most bullish report due to the mild weather we've been experiencing, due to the low demand of natural gas we've been experiencing. And uh, yeah, that's kind of my thoughts there. Watch for that gap up. Ultimately, guys, if we get pushed down, rejected here, um, again, coupled with a bearish natural gas inventory report. I think there's going to be more downside um, for you guys for natural gas, at least here in the short term over the next two to three weeks. So that's kind of the breakdown there. Now let's talk about some other stocks and ETFs that I'm watching very, very quickly. We already talked about NVIDIA. We already broke down Tesla. We already broke down Home Depot. Two other ones that I'm watching here are going to be Shopify, ticker symbol SHOP. We broke out of this 380 resistance or the 370 resistance rather yesterday. Very bullish move, but we ultimately failed to hold 370 as a support here. So I'm interested in seeing what we do tomorrow, guys, because Honestly, the way I'm looking at it here, this thing looks like it wants to fall down to that three, maybe not 340. That might be a big correction. But the fact that we didn't close above 370, it seems like there could be some downwards pressure. Maybe we go all the way down to 345, which would be a pretty good dip, especially if we hold that 50 SMA. That's probably the most extreme sell-off case there. We could also go down maybe to 360, maybe to 355, and ultimately rally for from there, and that could also be a dip buy, but this could all be canceled out if we pop in the morning, guys. If we ultimately just pop from here um, into the 370s and start to rally and break above that resistance from, I believe, yesterday at about 380, that could be the bullish move we need to see on Shopify um, to get us up to that $400 level that I was talking about in yesterday's video, which is really the next spot um, that we're going to based on the technicals here. So Shopify, I'm really liking this one, guys. Very, very bullish. MO struggled a bit today, but we're still holding that 50 SMA. This still gives me hope that we're going to break above that 50-50 uh, level of resistance tomorrow or maybe sometime um, this week. And if we do, like I mentioned yesterday, that's a nice 5% potential for profit up to the next resistance, which is at $53. The last one that I want to talk about today, guys, is PayPal, ticker symbol PYPL, just simply because it's at a higher low on top of the 180 SMA. And I'm looking to see if we get the confirmation, which would be obviously it holding that 180 SMA, breaking that EMA, and ultimately breaking that 50 SMA. If we get that, that could be a good uh, bullish move that could get us to that 108, $108 level of resistance, which from where we are now at about 103 up to that level, that's around a 3 to 4% profit here on PayPal. So PayPal, I'm liking it. I saw some analysts bumping it up to a buy here on the dip to this is pretty attractive in my opinion so overall that's it for the video today guys if you enjoyed it feel free to go down below hit that like button and consider subscribing if you want to see further content from me and if you want to be further connected with the strive smart community again the discord link is down below as well as the facebook group and if you want two free stocks from webull valued up to 1400 bucks use my affiliate link down below deposit 100 bucks and you'll get two free stocks valued up to $1,400. So I'll catch you all in the next video. Thanks again for watching. If you want to see my M1 portfolio, click this link. There's going to be a link right here. Click that, watch that video. And uh, yeah, I guess I'll catch you guys there. Thanks again for watching. See you soon.